So in this chapter, we're now going to set up our workflow between Photoshop and Indu and Marmoset 3D, or Marmoset Toolbag rather. Um, you can use the Unity engine. Uh, any real-time preview of your model will work fine. I find Marmoset is really straightforward and it helps you see the results without having to uh, slug through any other um, game engine, uh, I guess, fluff that we may not need just for viewing our models. So with uh, Marmoset opened, I'm just going to open up my mesh. I'm going to go to my video game prop and I'm going to bring in my OBJ. I immediately see this game model we've created previously. Uh, I don't see any normal seams, no distortion. Everything looks pretty good. And I'm going to quickly go through some of the cooler things that Marmoset can do for us. Um, the file menu is when you it was where you will open up your models and pretty much import them into Marmoset. Output is useful for uh, making turntables or screenshots of your model. Uh, material is where you'll plug in all your textures uh, and tweak specularities and glows, uh, all that good stuff. I'll go uh, through each one of these as it comes up during the workflow. View is really nice because I can set my model on a rotating turntable by tweaking my turntable slider right here so I can get a nice 3D view of my model spinning in place. Ooh, that's nice, isn't it? Uh, I can even pause it by pressing T or clicking this button. I can set this back to zero by pressing clear. I can even get the sky the rotate around. I'll unpause it now. And now we have a nice rotating light source. This is really good for seeing how your normals and your specular maps are working with each other. As the light goes around, the spec maps will really pop and you'll get to see kind of how your object will look with a dynamic light source. Uh, light, as we can see, light rotation is moving and animating in time here. Uh, our sky brightness can do what it says. <laughs> make the sky brighter or dimmer and there's a few different uh, lighting presets I like just to keep it at dawn but you can do all these different ones here's sunlight it kinda gives your uh, angle of uh, the light a little bit more severe so we have better angles uh, more shadows um, sunset kinda gives the appearance that uh, it's twilight and the sun setting so we have kind of a uh, redshift uh, hue of our light source here but I just like to keep it at dawn. It seems to be the most, uh, uh, I guess, the most basic. It keeps a uh, kind of a blue shifted, really mellow, neutral light source. And still keeps a pretty severe angle so we can see uh, shadows and whatnot. Render, this is where you can set different render options such as depth of field, ambient occlusion. You can turn your shadows on and off. You can actually turn uh, ambient occlusion on. See, I have this nice ambient occlusion right here and we won't be dealing with animate too much this is for characters mainly with skeletons alright so with that quick rundown of Marmoset out of the way let's get in and open up Photoshop and Indu 2 okay so I'm just gonna go and select my Indu 2 as I open up Indu 2 Photoshop will open up right alongside it my Photoshop opens up and I have this new Indu to uh, menu and please excuse if uh, Indu 2 shuts down every once in a while for me uh, there's some bugs in this build I'm working with so we'll just excuse them and sometimes if we need to restart Indu 2 we can do that alright so in, with Indu 2 we have this new normal map looking box and we even have this preview cube here just left click and drag to move the box hold down alt and drag to rotate you can also hold down or use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out and this lets you see how your normal map, normal maps are working for you alright great so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to minimize Indu and I'm going to open up that texture that I had prepared previously for our model here alright great so we can see that I have all my uh, folders set up I have my UV snapshot working and now we need to set up some basic masks that we can help that that'll help us uh, zone in on various parts of our model so I'm going to do a few tricks here 
So I'm going to hide my normal maps and go into my masks and I'm just going to create a new layer under masks. And this is going to be uh, base mask. And what we're going to do is this is just going to be the way where we select all of our UV islands and uh, it'll be really easy. So let's just get into it. I'm going to go back up to my UV snapshot layer and I'm going to go and grab the magic wand tool. Okay. And with my magic wand tool, if I click in the negative space, meaning outside of any UV island here, it's going to draw a selection around the borders of every single UV island we have. So basically what we have selected is all the negative white space around my UV islands. So I'm going to go down to base mask and I'm going to do a fill. But before I do my fill, I want to allow myself to have a little bit of buffer between these UV islands. I don't want my mask to be completely on the border edge of my UVs. So we're going to go to select, we're going to go to modify, and we're going to go to contract. Because right now the mask is selecting the negative space. So if we contract our mask, and we're going to contract it by 8 to 10 pixels, I prefer 8. Now if we hit OK, our mask kind of jumps 8 pixels away from our borders. And now we can uh, invert our selection. We'll go to inverse selection. And now I'm going to choose a black color in my swatches here. And here's a little shortcut. If I hold down alternate and hit backspace, I now fill every single UV island with a black fill. Why is this useful? Well, now anytime I want to select one of my UV islands, all I have to do now is hold down control and with a control held, I'm going to click this little thumbnail on my base mask and I can get my selections back. I can even hide my base mask layer, deselect, and if I want to get my, my mask selection, selections back, even with the layer hidden, I get my selections back. So this is going to give us a nice fine degree of control for painting just on my UV islands here. Um, I like to take it a step further and color code my mask for each single part of my mesh. That way I can, can, I get, I can kind of get a cleaner bearing on what parts of the model belong where. Um, so I'm going to create some new layers. And the first layer I'm going to make, I'm going to re rename this and call this front. And with front uh, made, I'm now going to go back into my base mask. I'm going to deselect. There's reselect and deselect. I like to use Control D as shortcuts for selections. And I'm going to go back to my magic wand tool. And I'm going to select this front uh, UV island here. Because I know that this UV island is the front of my wall, my main part of my wall. So now I'm going to hop back to front. I'm going to hide my base mask. So on my front layer, I'm going to pick the color red and hold alternate and press backspace. And now I have just a color coded red uh, fill for just my front layer or for my front UV island. And I'm going to do this for every single uh, island here. Uh, I'll do it one more time and then I'll pause it and do all the dirty work so you don't have to sit through and watch me do this. So again, I'm going to hide my front layer and I'm going to bring back my base mask right here and this time I'm going to uh, select my uh, right, the right side of my wall here. I'm going to select this wall right here. All right. So now I'm going to control D to deselect. With my magic wand selected I'm going to select this UV island. I'm going to hide and in my layer, new layer one I've created, I'm going to select the yellow color, hold down alternate, and hit backspace. That automatically fills that selection with yellow. And I'll rename this uh, right wall. And now I have a layer dedicated just to the right wall on my uh, UV islands here. So I'm going to pause it real quick and finish making all these uh, color-coded islands. Be right back. So I'm going to come down to my last uh, UV island mask I'm going to do and I'm going to show how we can select multiple uh, UV islands and give them the same mask color. I want to mask off the insides of my wall here. So the inside 
surfaces of my window rather so I'm going to select my base mask and I'm going to magic wand click one of these UV islands I'm going to hold down shift and my magic wand gets a little plus symbol and I can just select all four of these inside UV islands for my window I create a new layer call it window and let's give it a uh, I don't know kind of an orangish brown and we'll fill it alright so now what I'm left with if I can go back and unhide all my layers we're left with a nice color coded uh, I guess tell on where these surfaces uh, exist on my model and I can quickly just make a uh, Targa file for diffuse so I'm gonna with just my mask showing I'm gonna save this uh, this will be a temporary texture to show you exactly what's going on here and I like to save them in bitmaps for uh, Marmoset I don't think Marmoset likes yeah it can, no you can do Targa I think I'll do you know what I'm gonna go bitmap just to be safe uh, I think Marmoset likes working with bitmaps well we'll just check Let's see. I'll go to my material. I will open up Diffuse. Supported images. Actually, Targa is the way to go. The supported image types for Marmoset, uh, Targas, DDSs, uh, PSDs. Really, the only two file types I use in this list are Targas and PSDs. So I'm just going to keep it in Targa. I don't want to mess with PSDs too much. They have too much overhead. The file sizes are a little bit too big so I'm gonna go back in here and save this temporary diffuse color map as a Targa I'll just save it right on my desktop and we'll call this color key and I'll save it yep so let's go back into Marmoset I'll go to my diffuse button here and I'll go to my desktop and I'll select my color key and open and now we got a nice color keyed information on what's going on with my model here okay so now we have a better idea of what's going on and where my UV islands are for my model this type of uh, these steps may seem a little bit excessive but it'll help you in the long run with organizing your thoughts and organizing your textures within this process here alright great so the next order of business is uh, setting up my normal maps to get a nice base normal map so I'm gonna hide my mask and open up my normals if you remember in the last lesson I made two different base normal maps here okay so first I'm going to just select both of my normal maps and I'm gonna duplicate the layers and just duplicate them right on top we're not gonna copy them into another uh, document we're just gonna do them right on top I don't ever like to destroy my base original uh, normal maps. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and lock them and hide them. So I can always come back to my base and they will never be destroyed. So what we're going to do now is we're going to combine these two normal maps here so that we get the best of both worlds. The nice even hard surface, flat surface detail and the nice uh, smooth seam edges of our geometry normal map. So we really just want the edges of our geometry normal map and we just want the flat surface of my surface surface normal map. So what we got to do is we got to go in and kind of uh, feather out and delete the edges of my surface normal map. So what we can do is I can go up to my mask layer, control and click the thumbnail of my base mask. So if I zoom in now and open up my UV snapshot I see that I have a nice outline selection of all my UV islands now it's just a simple matter of using a feather tool to come in and delete the outside edges of my uh, normal surface map so at first I'm gonna go in and go to select modify and I'm going to contract this map by let's say 16 pixels what that's going to do is it's going to bring in my selection on the inside the inside of my UV islands rather than the outside I can now go to select 
refine edge and we're just going to add a nice feather here because we want a nice seamless transition between our two normal maps so I get a nice feathered edge on my selection here that's too much that'll work nicely and what we're gonna do now is we're going to let's see what happens if we just delete pay attention to our nice crisp uh, recessed panels right here that we want to keep if we hit delete now they go away and the underlying geometry map stays clear we wanted what we really wanted to do was inverse our selection all right now if we hit delete we get to keep our nice surface right here and if we hide our geometry base map I can see that I have a nice feathered edge around here deleting all the normals along the edge and if I bring back my geometry normal map and then unhide my surface we get the best of both worlds we get to keep our flat surface detail and we get to keep our nice base geometry edges here so now I'm just going to select both normal maps hit control and E and flatten them together and now I have a really nice base normal map with my edges seams the edges of my seams really nice and smoothed out and my flat surface detail undistorted so we'll just call this base normal and we'll lock that too we don't want to ever touch this normal map this is going to be our guide to the heavens alright now this will be a good time now to uh, export out a nice test normal map that we can plug into Marmoset alright great well, let me come back out one more time so what we're going to do is we're going to go to file save as and I'm just going to create a temporary targa for my normal we'll call this temp normal hit save resolution at 24 will be fine and we're gonna go in and select normal height map and we're going to select my temporary normal and now my normal map is plugged into my object here I get these nice mellowed out uh, normals on my edges here and I get a nice mellowed out surface detail with no distortion right here so let's go to view and let's turn on my sky turntable look how the normal maps are working now we can see as my light source rotates around my model my normal maps are just popping off the surface of my uh, wall here so really good uh, setup so far we got a nice color coded uh, setup we got a nice uh, blend of our two base normal maps working for us so I'm pretty happy about this right now alright so before we start getting dirty and making masks to uh, create normal maps I'm going to set up a really nice system that we can use for updating our progress when we're making our color maps our spec maps and normal maps so in Photoshop what we're going to do now is we're going to create base layers for each of our groups right here so mask will not be used our UV snapshot won't be used what we want to do are create base uh, textures for each one of these groups right here so a normal map I want to create a nice base layer and put it at the very bottom alright I want to hide my normal map but before I do that let's grab our eyedropper here and find some nice negative space here I want the purest blue we can get from this normal map and it looks like anything outside of my UV islands is the base blue meaning that when light hits this surface on the normal map it will be projected as flat there will not be any detail this is the basic blue color of our normal map so I'm just gonna grab my eyedropper here and soak up that color information now I'm going to hide my normal map. I'm going to go to layer one and call this base and hit alternate and backspace. Now we're left with a nice field blue normal map 
and it's a good base to start out with and I can reactivate my base normal it might seem a little bit redundant but it's always good to have backups in the tow so now we're gonna go to my AO and we're gonna create a base for my ambient occlusion uh, group and for right now let's just pick a mellow gray and we'll just plug in uh, let's just pick like an off-white I don't want it to be too dark so with my AO selected I have a nice base and let's go ahead and set my AO group as a multiply because my AO is just going to accentuate my color map by offering a monochromatic values that signify self self shading shadows I guess that's the best way to describe that so you'll understand more when we get into that process so I'm gonna go to color now and I'm gonna create a nice base for my color so this will be kind of a uh, grayish but it's always a good idea when you're texturing something to pick a main key color for my wall here I kinda want it to be a uh, let's think kind of a dirty warm uh, gray here so I can go to color here and increase my red and if I do a fill I may be increasing it a little too much I have a nice warm gray here that I'm gonna use as my base color because I'm gonna lean towards more warm colors when I'm making my color map here so with my base selected I can hide that for specular I'm gonna create a base specular and what we're gonna do for specular is for right now we're gonna pick a darker gray and we can always come back and change that base and we're just gonna make a nice dark base for my specular and for glow the base for glow will be as dark as we can get it uh, I don't like to pick very very black because in most applications you see black or magenta will usually be your transparency color so anything that's in pure black which is zero 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 will be completely transparent I like to make this one 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 for my glow map so it's not transparent but it's not going to do any harm for my glow map basically glow maps they uh, create a type of uh, I guess glow you could say or an incandescence that it, that makes the object look like it's emanating light and it works like this the darker the color the less glow the lighter or brighter the color the more glow you're gonna have so it's always a good idea to start out with no glow and then add glow on top of it later alright so now I got a good basis and base layers for all of my maps here and what we're gonna do now is we're going to create a macro that saves out each one of these layers so all we have to do is press a hotkey and it saves out each of our groups here and it automatically plugs it into marmoset so when you're making any changes on your model and on your textures you hit one key and instead of having to go to file save as a million times when you hit your hotkey of our macro it'll just update all these channels here and marmoset will automatically update so let's see if I can remember how we can do this so go to window we're gonna to go to actions and it's gonna bring up my action dialog here and I'm gonna expand it a little bit what we're gonna do now is we have default actions let's make a new set called custom and we're going to make a new action here create new action and all this does is it records every action you make until you press stop so I make this new action we'll call this mass save alright and before I hit record I want to go to my project folder and in my textures folder I'm gonna create a new folder and we're gonna call this uh, in progress this folder is where all your textures you're going to save out into Photoshop it's gonna plug in all your textures into this folder so we have a nice organized place where we can link our textures to in Marmoset or whatever real-time application you are using to preview your, preview your textures so with this new folder made I have the name made as mass save uh, function key I like to uh, set it as let's see what did I usually like to do uh, shift control F2 
I don't think that does anything naturally. Well, shift control F2. Nope, that's good. All right, so that doesn't really do anything, so it's safe to use that as a hotkey. Um, and I'm not going to give it any color. So as soon as I hit this record, every action I take inside of uh, Photoshop will be recorded. All right. So I kind of typically before I hit record, I'll come back to this. It's important to kind of start with maybe every layer except mask highlighted. So whenever you go through and uh, do all your actions, you're at a good square one. So let's create our new action. Call it mask save. Use our function key F2, shift and control. And now I'm going to hit record. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to individually hide these groups and save them out to my in progress folder. So anytime I make a change, I just hit control shift F2 and it automatically saves every single group I'm working in. All right, so let's be really careful. I don't want to mess this up and have to re record. So I hit record. The first thing I'm going to do is hide all of my groups alright then I'm going to highlight my normal map group and I'm just going to simply go to file save as go to my in progress and we'll call this uh, temp normal make sure you save it as a targa hit save 24 bits per pixel will be fine and there we go we will now deselect normal and highlight my AO and color make sure that my multiply is set as multiply and we're going to save this now go to save as in my in progress folder go to targa we'll call this our diffuse or temp diffuse and we'll hit save I will hide my AO and color. Now I'm going to open up my spec map. Save as this. Targa. Call this temp spec for specular map. Hit save. Okay. We're going to hide my specular. Hit glow. And then we're going to save as Targa temp glow and hit save all right and then we're just gonna go in and activate each layer again bring them bring everything back just to make sure that when we're done with our macro everything's back to normal and we're not hiding any layer that you don't want hidden all right so after I've recorded all my actions I'm gonna hit the stop playing and recording and now we have a brand new action I can go up here and collapse my mass save and I can get rid of this window so let's just see if it works okay first I'm gonna go into marmoset and I'm gonna plug in the rest of my temp temporary maps I just saved let's go to textures and progress this is my temporary temporary spec and go down to my emissive also known as glow map and I'm gonna plug in my temporary glow all right to activate the specularity you also have to check this box right here and we can instantly see we have a nice crisp sheen and we can adjust the intensity of our spec we can adjust how sharp it is so it gives it that really good metal feeling and the uh, Fresnel it tweaks it even further focuses the highlights even more alright so to prove that our mass save work let's go in and tweak our uh, our groups real quick so I'm going to hide everything. So in normal, I'm going to just hide my normal. So now whenever I save my normal map, nothing will show up. In AO, or in color rather, I'm going to go into my base. And I'm going to just overlay a dark gray. Make sure I hide my normal. So now the base of my color will be hidden. Let's go back into Marmoset and rekey in my temporary diffuse and go in and key in my temporary normal. I forgot to do that last time. So now we can see that my current base diffuse color is that gray, that warm gray we started out with. 
So the change we just made will test and see if whether if it gets darker or not. So I'll hide my AO and color. I'll go into my specular and I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to blast this out with pure white. That'll make sure that the spec map changes pure white. And this is simply just for testing purposes. And for glow, I'm going to do the same thing here. And I'm just going to make my glow a little bit lighter. Maybe not that because I can't see it anymore. All right. So now I'm going to test out my macro. So I hit Control Shift F2. All right there it just <laughs> it went crazy and did everything so let's go in the marmoset now and it looks like everything's good uh, my normal map doesn't exist anymore because I hit it I'll turn off my specularity for a second my color seems to be really bright and my emissive let's see where do we we gotta activate emissive it's somewhere on here. Here we go. Emissive map intensity. It looks like my emissive is really good. And it looks like my mass save works. So now anytime I make a change inside of Photoshop, I hit Control Shift F2 and all my textures will now update in Marmoset. Because I have Temp Diffuse, Temp Normal, Temp Spec, and Temp Glow all plugged in. So that's some that's just some basic setup for getting our Indu and Photoshop and Marmoset workflow set up so we can get in and just bang out some nice textures. All right, well, next chapter we're going to get into the actual process of making normals in Photoshop and converting them in Indu. I'll see you then.